what's up you guys my name is Mina welcome to my channel Mina Reads and today we are going to be talking about my worst books of 2021 um 2021 was an interesting reading year I feel like you'll probably be hearing this from a lot of booktubers that it wasn't that great of a reading year because I feel like a lot of my friends at the very least have been saying that it was just a year full of disappointments and meh reads and all that kind of stuff and I would definitely describe my reading year as meh there were definitely a few high points Some high points I'll talk about those in my best books of the year as well but I feel like the grand majority of my reading this year was just meh so there's not a lot of it that evoked really strong emotions in me either positive or negative but the books on this list they were just horrible reading experiences that I absolutely hated and this video is going to be my chance to really get all of that that anger and frustration off my chest. So before we dive into all of that negativity and hateration I do just want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor book of the month so book of the month is a super popular and fast-growing online book subscription service for readers and how it works is that each month their team vets hundreds of books to provide you with a carefully curated selection of new and early release fiction titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching so I love book of the month been working with them for a really long time and even before I started working with them I did have a subscription with them and I just think they're a really cool easy convenient um, and affordable book subscription service option uh, but in addition to all of that I also like the fact that it's a super risk free service so you can skip any month at any time you won't be charged. This month their selections include Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson which is about two sisters having to reconcile after their mother's death and their mother leaves them like a kind of peculiar inheritance that is basically meant to like force them together. This is literary fiction and I'm really excited by it. Also the cover is just really beautiful. Then we have The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. This is a historical fiction. It's set in Gilded Age New York and it's about this like really wealthy family. So then we have Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is a modern kind of retelling or take on and then there were none by Agatha Christie I believe and this is about a bunch of 20 somethings who are on this like secluded island in Hawaii and some things start to go wrong somebody dies somebody turns up missing and it's just a lot going on sounds interesting if you're into like mysteries and thrillers Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho and yeah so it's about these two young women coming of age and it's supposed to be like this really complex story about life and friendship and womanhood and growing up and all that good stuff so it sounds fun and the cover is so beautiful I'm obsessed with the colors and then we have my most anticipated release of 2022 which is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly this is a queer rom-com it has a non-binary love interest the protagonist is like this woman who's recently divorced but she's like restarting her life and she's joining this cooking show and so I believe her love interest is like a fellow contestant on said cooking show really excited about this it just sounds like it's gonna be so cute and the cover is really adorable so I'm hype and they were kind enough to also send me one of their add-ons which is the maid I believe it's about this maid who she gets accused of a murder and so she's like frantically attempting to clear her name and it sounds like a fun time thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video and let's get into all the hateration so I don't I'm not like a huge fan of disclaimers but I'm just gonna say here that my opinions should have no bearing on your personal feelings about these books um, and I know that some people they're really attached to certain books and they're like their favorite book of all time and people feel like if if you don't like it that you're invalidating their opinion and my opinion should never invalidate yours if you love these books I'm happy for you but that was not my experience and that's that's gonna be it all right so this is gonna be a pretty short list there's only six books on here and uh, these were the only books that I read this year that really evoked like strongly negative emotions in me um, and so yeah I just want to rant about them and grab yourself a drink or something and let's get started now the first book that I'm going to talk to you about is barbarian lover by Ruby Dixon this is the third book I believe in the barbarian ice planet barbarian series and ice planet barbarian series if you don't know is about these women they like are abducted by aliens and their spacious crash lands on some planet um it crash lands on this ice planet which is full of sexy blue aliens and the sexy blue aliens are kind of on the verge of extinction because there's not enough women left in their tribe so finding these uh, human women is like a huge win for everybody and they're like oh my god yay so we can like repopulate our community this is wonderful so they're all like pairing off with these human women and that's what each book in a series is about um and this book is about this one girl Kira pairing off with this uh, sexy alien guy Ihako and Ihako is like really sweet and funny and easygoing and then Kira is like super uptight and they're supposed to like balance each other out but I hated the vibes of this book and what it represents because the whole series is really about 
like fertility in a way because it's about them like wanting to repopulate their tribe because there's only like two women in their tribe and one of them is like a little girl so they need more women so that they can continue on their race species whatever it's called so like i understand that that's like uh there's like an aspect of the biological imperative in this story but the the main premise of the barbarian lover or whatever is that the girl kira she is like infertile and so she doesn't want to engage in a relationship with one of the alien men because she knows that they want to have babies and so she's like oh well i can't be with one of you because that's her mental state she's like i can't be with one of you because i can't have babies every single person in the tribe does not need to be reproducing to be like a valued member of the tribe that's like not it's not a necessity so th that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense and so she spends the whole book like fending off Ihako's advances because she can't have kids and then later in the story it talks about how like she's fixed because all of the humans they have to like ingest some kind of parasite thing and the parasite thing helps them it, it like navigate the icy climate of this planet that their human bodies are just not made to withstand so um the parasite thing inside of her it's like helpful parasite if that makes any sense they have a symbiotic relationship and so the thing makes it so that her womb is fixed or whatever so she can have babies now and she's like oh i'm fixed like i'm whole again blah 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 and this shit just was so ugh. it just i don't like stories about fertility in this particular way and the idea that a woman is not whole if she can't have children it is so icky to me and i just fucking hated that like i just hated it and it just really colored like the whole reading experience for me so next we're going to talk about reverb by anna zabo so this is a like bodyguard romance it's about this girl named mish and mish is like the lead guitarist for this band and their band is like kind of taking off they're getting more and more famous and they're currently on tour and mish basically has this stalker and so the man decides that they're going to hire her a bodyguard to you know maintain her safety so they hire this bodyguard and it's this guy i can't remember what his name is but um i was so excited to read this book because it's like an all queer band and mish is like pansexual and her love interest is a trans man and he was really cool mish was really cool i was having a good time but like i said the premise of this is that it's a bodyguard romance right except he is so abysmal at guarding her body that the book actually like I was vibrating with anger at how fucking stupid the characters were in this book. So essentially they only hired this one bodyguard to protect not only Mish but also the rest of the band and then for some reason the bodyguard is also doing just regular venue security duties so he's like going around making sure that nobody's getting too rowdy in the crowd and he's like you know he's like around where they like check your bags and shit like when you go into a concert venue and so then every single time they have a concert or they do some kind of event something happens where mish gets attacked and she gets attacked at like three or four times in the book while this guy is supposed to be her bodyguard and he's always in the wrong place at the wrong time and he never is there to save her and so that's like the main conflict of the story is that he feels bad like oh mish i'm so sorry i couldn't protect you and then mish is like you don't have to feel sorry it's not your fault it is his fault it is his fault he's your bodyguard that's literally his whole entire fucking job and he's shitty at it he's so terrible and i hated the fact that the, the whole book is really overwhelmed by this thing where mish feels the need to you know affirm him that he is good at his job and whatever he's not good at his job if he was good at his job he would have told them that they needed to hire more security that he couldn't just be the only security guard that they have because like obviously if you ever go into like a concert venue like the concert venue usually has their own security of some kind and then maybe the act themselves will have security so if the act themselves only has one security guard and there's like five four or five people in the band and not only is he trying to secure the band members but he's also securing like the perimeter he's never going to be in the right place at the right time to protect this woman so it just was so fucking irritating like every five seconds the girl was getting harmed she was getting her things stolen and uh, it was just like it was so uncomfortable like when i read a bodyguard romance i want to read about you know a, a protector and the protected kind of vibe and i never at any point that i feel like mish was being protected i felt like she was constantly at risk and the story kept making it seem like 
we're supposed to care like oh my god you know poor guy i can't even remember what his name is but like oh poor guy you know he's feeling bad about himself but it's really not his fault that this guy is stalking me obviously it's not his fault that she's being stalked but he could have been better at his job he was literally so shitty at his job and it just was like it just sucked like it, how is this a bodyguard romance and he's terrible at guarding her body. How is that? How does that fucking work? Like, it just make it make sense. It just bothered me so much and I hated it. So next up, we have Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. And mm, mm, I hated this damn book. I detested the reading experience of this book. Like, this is maybe one of the weirdest books that I have ever read. And the reason that I'm putting it on my worst list, because I don't, think that the whole book is terrible but the reason it's on my worst list is because of how horrible the reading experience felt for me like it was so deeply uncomfortable and i hated it so fucking much and i tweeted about it like ad nauseum while i was reading it I, there were so many screenshots on twitter of when i was talking about it because this just this book was so fucking weird basically milk fed is about this girl named rachel she has an eating disorder and so this story is kind of an exploration of just rachel her mental state her eating disorder um as well as like this um, relationship that she gets into with this girl named Miriam who works at like a frozen yogurt place that she frequents um, so this story is exploring Rachel's eating disorder Rachel's relationship with this woman and also Rachel's mommy issues um, and how her mommy issues are like the the root of her eating issues as well and so I really found this story to be very interesting on a number of levels um, I did think that the discussion of like disordered eating was really fascinating in this and I liked hearing Rachel's inner monologue because I think it was well rendered in like Rachel's inner monologue is really like claustrophobic and uncomfortable to read about especially when it comes to like her counting her calories and things like that and I felt like I don't want to say it's like a realistic depiction because I have never had an eating disorder but like it was just it was very interesting and very in the moment and I felt all of Rachel's emotions and I feel like that was all conveyed really well but where the story went off the rails for me is when it came to sex there was like so much discussion of sex in this book and you guys know that I am not approved by any stretch of the imagination and I don't have issues with sex being discussed or whatever in fiction um but the way that the author chose to describe the sex scenes in this was so disgusting that it, it just I couldn't take it seriously so let me give you an example because I can't just say like oh it was so weird but one example would be that our character Rachel so she has all of these fantasies like I mentioned she has mommy issues right so she has all these fantasies particularly about this older woman that works at her job um she really wants like validation from this woman so she has lots of fantasies about this woman and some of them are kind of like mommy kink incest fantasies which are weird certainly but I think that like I think that the point of them is that human sexuality is strange and human sexuality and like your sexuality your kinks and all that stuff is really informed by like your your mental state and like your issues and stuff sometimes so I think that that made sense like why she was attracted to that older woman and why she had a certain type of fantasy about that older woman I think that makes sense it was kind of weird but it existed but as the story goes on the fantasies just get weirder like there's this one scene where she is fantasizing that she has a penis which is fine lots of queer women think about not necessarily about having a penis but like lots of queer women use phallic objects in sexual intercourse with other women so like that's fine and there's nothing like weird about that but what's weird is the way that the scene is described like she's having a fantasy about this older woman like I said so she's thinking about the older woman she's thinking about like how she wants to have sex with her with this like imaginary dick that she has and so she's calling it frankencock and so she's like I activated my frankencock and uh, and she was like and I spread her cheeks and it was a it was a lovely shade of purple seedless grape like what are you fucking talking about what are we talking about right now like what it, what's happening and and then like there was a scene where she talks about like you know she's like oh, I thought she would taste like moss and cheese but really she tasted like kumquats like <sighs> huh and like like it just was weird there was this one scene where she was like going down on the woman and she was like oh there was like a sweet and filthy wind it's like what are we what are we talking about <laughs> It was just so gross like and I just feel like I couldn't take it seriously because 
it just takes over so much of the narrative and I couldn't appreciate it because it just was like and it just got weird and fucking weirder like her holes were a lovely shade of purple seedless grape like what what like I'm so traumatized just fucking thinking about all of the different quotes in there like they're just indelibly etched on my mind and I fucking hate it like it's so nasty Woo. Well, moving on from that book um I feel compelled to tell you that the next two books the last two books on this list are both going to be by Katie Robert um so the duality of Katie Robert being on my sexiest books of the year list which is kind of like a a second tier of my best books of the year so kudos to her to being on my sexiest books of the year but also my worst books of the year because these books fucking sucked they were bad i'm sorry to say but they they sucked ass so the first one i've already talked about this a few times on the channel but neon gods by katie robert absolutely hated it absolutely hated it i didn't like a single thing about it this is a hades and persephone retelling basically zeus eh, Persephone's hand in marriage has been promised to Zeus. She doesn't want to marry him. So she runs away to Hades to protect her. And Hades decides that the way that they're going to protect her is they're going to pretend to be in a relationship and they're going to ruin her image because she has like this good girl image in the, the media and they're kind of supposed to be like socialites of some kind. So she has this good girl image in the media. They're going to ruin that image by engaging in like this public kink relationship. And the whole story is like, oh my god, like Hades is so freaky and they're doing all of this shit. And like, it's just so boring. It's just so, so unbelievably boring. I don't want to say I don't understand how people like this, but I just didn't like anything about it. Like I didn't like the characters. I didn't think that they were interesting at all. This was supposed to be like the grumpy sunshine trope. I don't think that it gave that at all. Um, this was supposed to be super duper fucking sexy and they co constantly talked about how Hades was like so freaky and they were gonna do all of this stuff that was so wild and scandalous and blah 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 but it just didn't feel wild. It didn't feel scandalous. It just felt tame. Like they went to a sex club not even a sex club, they went to a party. Hades threw a party in his home where people came and it was like a, a orgy party. And I mean, I'm not saying that orgy parties are like every day, but that is not like the freakiest thing in the world. In particular, because Katie Robert has like a public orgy or like public sex scene in every single book that I have read by her thus far. So, it was not like some wild, oh my god, sort of moment because she does that in every single one of her books. So yeah, I, I hated their relationship. I just think that their relationship was boring. Not that it was like bad or problematic, but it was just boring. I didn't feel the chemistry. I didn't feel tension. I didn't feel like there was any stakes in the story because there is like this idea that Zeus is so scary and powerful and Hades is the only way that Persephone can be protected. But I don't feel like the stakes are well written, so I wasn't invested and I didn't care. It just was not good. It just was so boring. Like I said in my wrap up, if you've watched that, the reason that I, I hate this one so much, because I feel like a book being boring is not necessarily the reason for it to be the worst anything. But the reason that I hate this so much is that it is something that Katie Robert has already done. If you've read any of her other books, she does this trope all the time where the characters one character will be in like a vulnerable position and need some kind of help and so the person who's in a position to offer them help will say okay I will do this for you if we enter this like sexual relationship and it's always like a dom sub relationship and they're always in this like you know it's a fake relationship but not really and then they do the sex thing and then they're in love and like she does that in so many of her books that it's just like who gives a shit like who gives a shit we've seen it before pathetic i didn't like it one star i hated it another katie robert is the sea witch now this book is so so fucking dumb that it it made me lose brain cells reading it um and i genuinely felt like it just was unreal like it was unreal katie robert has a lot of books where the premise is just kind of like huh you know like you're kind of looking at it like what are you talking about like that doesn't make sense what are we doing what's happening here she has a lot of books that have that vibe but this book in particular oh my fucking god okay so the premise of the sea witch is that ursula it has a relationship with like the prince eric type character and um ursula has beef with king triant so she decides that what she's going to do to get back at king triant is she's going to seduce king triant's daughter ariel and she does that by like forcing prince eric to i don't know 
be in a relationship with her but it's all fake and they have like this whole elaborate ruse planned so they plan to tell ariel that prince eric is in a lot of debt and he needs her help to get out of this debt so that he can escape like this he's like a sex worker he works at like a, a kink dungeon and so they're like we need your help um fundraising this money so that he can like buy his way out of this job so ariel thinks that you know she's like saving him by coming to this place to you know rescue him and pay off his debts and stuff so she doesn't have the money to pay off the debts so ursula encourages her to sell her virginity because of course she's a virgin she encourages ariel to sell her virginity for a million dollars they sell her virginity and who buys her virginity ursula ursula pays a million dollars for this woman's virginity just so that she can have sex with her and then like call King Triton on the phone like, I fucked your daughter. How do you feel about that? And that's like her epic revenge against King Triton who like destroyed her life. Is that she fucked his daughter. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. That's, that's the big thing. They convince Ariel to come to this place and then they convince Ariel to sell her virginity and then they buy her virginity for a million dollars which is like the craziest fucking thing i've ever heard because they already had the in where ariel believed that she was in this like loving and committed relationship with prince eric so if they just wanted her virginity she could have just had eric fuck ariel for free and then there would still be this whole i fucked your daughter how do you feel about that they still could have did that why the hell did you pay a million dollars for something you could have for free that doesn't make any sense like it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, fucking ever and it just was so odd as a revenge plot like i just feel like this is something that katie robert does because this is something that she does in the next book i'm going to tell you about but she does these things where like there's a plot in her story but the plot never makes any fucking sense like if i'm getting revenge against somebody why would my revenge involve me spending a million dollars on something i could get for free all you have to do is seduce the person and it's crazy because ariel already liked ursula and she already liked eric so they could have just said hey you want to have a threesome they paid a million dollars for it it doesn't make any fucking sense and anyway long story short they all fall in love with each other and they're they're in like this polyamorous relationship whatever you know good for them but this shit was so profoundly dumb that i couldn't enjoy any of it and the stupidity continues because the final book that i'm going to tell you about is learn my lesson also by katie robert and uh, so this book is about hades meg and hercules and basically meg and hades are in this relationship um, kind of like life partners but meg is unfulfilled in their relationship and hades knows this so hades decides that what he's going to do is he is going to introduce meg to this guy hercules and he wants meg to have this fling with hercules and for some reason he believes that this fling with hercules is going to rectify the wrongs in his relationship with meg and it's going to make meg you know reconnect with him somehow it's unexplained how that's supposed to work but supposedly that's going to work that's how he's going to fix their relationship and um and you find out that actually hercules is the son of zeus and zeus was hades's old friend who actually ends up betraying him and murdering his wife and son so the way that he's going to get revenge obviously is um having sex with hercules and um I just want to say, what the absolute fuck? Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Like, this man, this man is responsible for the death of your wife and your child. And what you're going to do is have sex with his son. You're, you're having sex with his son. You're inviting his son into your relationship with your life partner and that is like epic revenge like bro no if i was hades's wife from beyond the grave i would be haunting that motherfucker to the ends of the earth he, he would never he would never sleep a wink he would get no rest if i was his wife are you fucking kidding somebody kills me somebody murders me and your response is to have sex with their child and not only have sex with their child but to fall in love with their child to fall in love with and be in a committed wonderful loving relationship with their kid that is your grand revenge for the death of me your wife and your son 
How does that shit make sense? And and the thing about it that I, I hate the most, I hate that, but something else that I hate about it is that Hades is supposed to be like this really cold, calculating, and intelligent, like ruthless guy. And if I were the ruthless guy and somebody murdered my son, I would murder their son. That would be my grand plan. And I think that the story would make more sense if he had intentions to kill Hercules and then, I don't know, Hercules was just so interesting, so compelling that he couldn't do it and he falls in love with him. And then there's just like a forbidden romance element to it because I had intentions to kill you but now I like you. That would have been interesting. But instead, his grand plan is like, your dad killed my wife and son, so I'm gonna let you fuck my girlfriend because she doesn't like me anymore. How does that fucking make sense? Oh God, corny, <laughs> man, boo, tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomatoes. And it's just like, it just doesn't work. Neither of the books worked, none of the books worked. Katie Robert very much is an author that I just don't know if I can keep reading from her. And it makes me really sad because I think that Katie Robert is talented at writing a sex scene. She writes amazing sex scenes and I love the fact that she writes about so many polyamorous stories. I love polyamory and I'm polyamorous myself so I feel like um, reading poly stories is always great to me and so since she writes so many I always feel compelled to read from her but I just feel like her plots just don't give. And in addition to just not like being that great like they're also dumb. Like just they're just stupid. I'm sorry. So anyway that was my epic Katie Robert tirade. This is the end of the video. I have talked for way too long, but I just had so much to say. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this curse-filled video. Um, let me know what was the worst book that you read in 2021. I'd love to hear about it. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, you guys.